quantitative assessment of mitral regurgitation using proximal isovelocity surface area. Whilst detecting the presence of mitral regurgitation is relatively simple with the use of colour Doppler, quantification of the lesion is a little more complex. The semi-quantitative measures listed in the table are good at differentiating between the extremes of MR, i.e. between mild and severe MR. However, a fully quantitative approach is generally required in the clinical setting. Prior studies have shown that regurgitant volume and effective regurgitant orifice area, both of which will be discussed later, are the quantitative measurements of choice as they provide the strongest prediction for clinical outcomes. Again, as the table shows, there are three methods for the quantitative assessment of regurgitant lesions. We'll start off firstly with proximal isovelocity surface area, or PISA. The proximal isovelocity surface area method of assessing the severity of mitral regurgitation is based on two principles. Firstly, flow dynamics. As a regurgitant jet moves towards a regurgitant orifice, the flow accelerates. This flow occurs along a series of concentric, roughly hemispheric shells with a regurgitant orifice at the centre. This is the flow convergence area, or PISA. Flow velocity is greatest at the narrowest point of the orifice known as the vena contractor. Secondly, the conservation of mass, or continuity principle. In the absence of an extracardiac leak or intracardiac shunting, the volumetric movement of blood per unit time, known as flow rate, is constant throughout the heart. The flow rate is expressed as the velocity of blood movement multiplied by the area of the orifice or conduit it is travelling through. Thus, if the area through which blood travels decreases, such as regurgitant or stenotic lesions, blood velocity will increase. Knowing this enables us to conclude that flow within the PISA is the same as flow at any point within the regurgitant jet, including at the regurgitant orifice. In simple terms, mitral regurgitation occurs because of the defective coaptation of the leaflets. And, for the most part, the larger the defect, the more severe the regurgitation. The size of this defect is known as the effective regurgitant orifice area. Within the PISA are many hemispheric shells. By selecting the shell where aliasing occurs, where there's a distinct colour change, normally from red to blue or blue to red, we know definitively that the velocity at this point is the aliasing velocity or Nyquist limit, as shown on the colour Doppler scale. Zooming up on the mitral valve in the apical four-chamber window and shifting the colour Doppler scale downward to approximately 40 cm per second optimises the aliasing velocities, making the PISA hemispheric zone bigger and more measurable. Scrolling through the cine loop, the largest PISA will be found at mid-systole. The radius of the PISA is measured from the point of aliasing to the centre of the regurgitant orifice. Toggling colour Doppler off and on may be necessary to see the orifice clearly. PISA can now be calculated and is equal to 2 pi r squared, and flow within the PISA is thus 2 pi r squared times the Nyquist limit. The maximum velocity of blood at the mitral regurgitant orifice can be measured by continuous wave Doppler. Flow at the orifice would thus be effective regurgitant orifice area multiplied by the mitral regurgitant peak velocity. Using the continuity principle, flow would be the same at the orifice and within the PISA, thus Effective regurgitant orifice area multiplied by the mitral regurgitant peak velocity equals 2 pi r squared multiplied by the Nyquist limit. And effective regurgitant orifice area would therefore equal 2 pi r squared multiplied by the Nyquist limit divided by the mitral regurgitant peak velocity. Remembering that volume is a product of air and VTI, mitral regurgitant volume can be calculated. MRVTI can be calculated by tracing the MR jet. Multiplying MRVTI by the effective regurgitant orifice area leads to the regurgitant volume. Mitral regurgitant fraction is expressed as mitral regurgitant volume divided by mitral stroke volume multiplied by 100%. Mitral stroke volume is calculated by tracing the mitral valve inflow VTI and multiplying that by the mitral valve area. There are a number of caveats and limitations that may make the PISA calculation inaccurate. The PISA method assumes that the MR orifice is a circle. Often the orifice is irregular or ovoid, and therefore the flow convergence area does not consist of hemispheres. PISA also assumes that the hemispheres are perfect half circles. This often is not the case, as seen in this still, and the flow is restricted by calcified leaflets or the ventricular wall. An angle correction factor has to be applied to the effective regurgitant orifice area, which is the actual angle of the hemisphere divided by 180. So, for instance, a perfect half circle hemisphere would have an angle of 180 degrees, and the effective regurgitant orifice area wouldn't be affected, as 180 divided by 180 equals 1. Multiple mitral regurgitant jets are a challenge, as the varying flow convergent areas are eccentric, which leads to overlap and impingement on each other. 
It is also assumed that continuous wave Doppler of the MR jet and the Pisa radius are calculated at the same point of the cardiac cycle. There is a simplified approach to Pisa quantification that has been validated. Certain conditions have to be present for it to hold true. Firstly, the Nyquist limit has to be set at 40 cm per second. Secondly, if the maximum MR velocity is 5 m per second, the equation can be simplified. An effective regurgitant orifice area is the radius squared and then halved. An MR velocity of 5 m per second represents a 100 mm of mercury pressure difference between the left atrium and left ventricle in systole. As there are additional assumptions and caveats in this simplified approach, it should only be used as a quick screen. So finally, in primary mitral regurgitation, an effective regurgitant orifice area of greater than 0.4 cm squared is consistent with severe MR between 0.2 and 0.39 cm squared with moderate and less than 0.2 cm squared with mild MR. Regurgitant volumes of greater than 60 millilitres are linked with severe MR between 30 and 59 millilitres with moderate and less than 30 millimetres with mild MR.